we are back. I'm having to reshoot the intro here because I guess I was completely out of frame. So we are, we're doing watercolor video here. Um, uh, my father had spoken about wanting to paint and I had tried to talk about how to use simple colors and, you know, to, to get the joy of painting, um, you know, uh, kind of shoehorned into, you know, a, a good starting position where you can enjoy uh, your painting enough that you can um, go forward and, you know, and have fun and even have some like somewhat quality products. In this situation, similar to how I did wood carving, I want you guys to have the exact same products. Um, we're going to go as minimal and, and when it's not really cheap, but I'm trying to do minimal as possible. Uh, water clothes are not, um, they're not really cheap if you get good stuff. The paper Archie's is, is pretty expensive. Um, so these are the Daniel Smith watercolors. We're going to be using Quindicrin Rose, which is like kind of a magenta. It's a, it's a purpley red kind of thing. We're going to be using Thalo Blue and New Gamboge. Now all of these come in the basic, uh, like the cheapest starter set that Daniel Smith sells. And these are the little five milliliter bottles. Uh, and then I'm also using a Quindicrin Purple, which you can buy in a five mil, but it's like, um, I don't know. Five mil of watercolors lasts a long time, okay? But I think it's like three dollars more to get that one. Um, it's not necessary to get this purple one. Um, you can. One of the pieces doesn't have it, and you can you can have a lot of fun without it. Making art and starting to paint, like it, there's there's so much that goes into it. I think when we look at things online, we think about we think. You watch somebody do it, you say, hey, I can do that. You can. There's so many what ifs and things that can go wrong and they cause failures, right? And they're not that big of a deal if you're doing this, you know, spending all your time on this, going to school eight hours a day more, um, then it's not that big of a deal. And yes, everybody has the intelligence and problem solving skills to do it, but you don't have the time, right? And there's no reason to do it. You also don't need to do paint by number, right? So I'm gonna start you off on some basic stuff and spend some time on it, right? Yes, you're gonna have to put a little bit of time into it and you're gonna have to deal with your emotional and psychological part because you're gonna be afraid to do it, all right? And I promise you, this is rewarding, right? Just the fact that you're gonna have uh, some solid pieces. These pieces are not, um, they're not maybe the greatest you've ever seen and we're very desensitized. These pieces, they're gonna be so much more fun in person. I really can't show you uh, how nice they are. They just, they don't look very good uh, filmed with an iPhone. All right, have fun guys. Now we're basically gonna be doing a foreground of colors with these two and then a background with the blue, okay? With watercolor, how watered down your colors are plays a huge part and what they look like, how dark they are, all of that. So I would suggest taking a piece of art and going through, right, just very simple colors, just use these two at first, even just one of them, get water down, right? Go down that page, do a little bit more water, a little bit more water, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more yellow, do a little grid on your piece of paper, or just play around, which is what I do. I do not go into art organized, Right, I'm more like the Julia Child's cooking method, like whoops, we dropped something on the floor, who needs a measuring cup type of deal. <clears throat> I think that, it, that creativity for me comes out of the, uh, the chaos and the problems that happen when mistakes occur and a, a very fast, spontaneous choice is made. So there's two ways that you could go about this. You could go about it like, well, I could probably use a bigger brush. And I do want to talk about brushes here. Um, Y'all are gonna buy a nice brush, okay? You're just gonna buy one at first, uh, depending on what you want to spend. Um, all right, now look how fun this is. Look how nice this is, just going across and see if, since I didn't mix up the water and that pigment, you get to see it expand right there, right? Let's get a little bit closer. And I'll do another one of those real quick here. Just get a little bit of pigment on there and then put that in there. 
because I mean we're just playing in a puddle right and it's just absolutely exciting and life affirming for me I'm I'm sorry to geek out on this but boy in our digital technical age we're not much as hands-on not much as actually tactile material not much as unplanned so we're gonna do this there's we're basically I'm gonna do um, a few layers I'm gonna let this dry I'm gonna do a few layers what you could also do is do a gradient from the red because we're gonna get darker as it goes down all right I'm gonna be mixing a little bit more of the red and and we're gonna get a darker orange it's gonna look like autumn colors all right it's gonna look like the red leaves mixed with the yellow ones and then we're gonna do a blue sky very basic um, but this is gonna be museum quality art all right relax on all the promises all right I think you guys are gonna have fun how about that I think you guys might have fun I'm gonna let this dry be back in a little bit okay so here we're gonna start mixing a little bit of this maroon with a little bit of this yellowish color now in these colors that darker one this red maroon is going to be uh, much stronger so it's going to be a lot less of it to change the color of this orange you might want to separate this out and do it in another little containment unit um, but again um, I kind of like seeing what happens right and I'm also not mixing this because there's you know the more distribution the less distribution uh, the more definition in the chaos there is. So we're going to get it about like that. We're going to get that real wet. And then we're going to start going across. And at this point, we're going to you know, try to evaluate whether or not this is going to be dark enough. It's going to get a little bit lighter when it is drying. And I think it needs a little bit more um, mixing. It's not going well over here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. <coughs> get a little bit darker and as long as it hasn't dried too much on the paper because you're on a clock with this stuff a little bit uh, it'll still meld in quite nicely but <clears throat> I mean here in Denver like if I wait even um, even a little bit of time right like if I'm going from one side of the piece I'm doing a figure by the time I get down here I need to be done with what's going on up here, right? And I'm doing very fast work. Within a few minutes, this stuff's going to be absorbed into the paper, and so it's no longer going to be <clears throat> mixing the same. But all this depends on how much water you're using in general. Um, obviously, it takes longer for more water to dry. I feel like this still is not quite red enough, so we're going to add a little bit in there. And again, we have this kind of pond going on, right um, and we're kind of doing a uh, well there's a bunch of processes where you drop dye into water but like marbling paper or any of this kind of stuff we're just watching it kind of mix together and get a little complicated <clears throat> this could be very calculated or you can have fun with it like this and, and both of them are going to give you a really nice rich texture all right so let's let that dry Okay, here we go for round three. So, more magenta. Uh, or the quindocrine rose, I'm sorry. The reddish color. Oh, and I'm using way too small of a brush. You can use a smaller one, but like, so the bigger ones, and especially when you're using a quality brush, which is like one of the main reasons I use a quality one is they can hold a lot more water and paint, right? So, when you're doing like a stroke, you can actually get that done um, and it or instead of it like you know patching out and drying out it's gonna happen anyway but it works better and so when you're using a bunch of water and like I was talking about with these you know you want to get everything wet at the same time um, so you can control how it's absorbing all right I'm gonna shut up let's do this and do 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 oops so if you do this kind of fast and I would suggest right because this is um, this is kind of a few 
you're not doing a whole lot at one time, right? And I think that people generally like to invest a little bit more time. So you feel like you're doing something. So I would suggest setting up a few of them and then doing slight variations on each piece um, in the tone and the color and the shape. And we're going to do this down here. <clears throat> I'd like to go to all the way to purple on this um, down here, but it's not in that first set, so I'm not going to do it. Um, so we're just going to have to figure out a way to go darker down here. And we'll just fade this in. Yeah, paint it over anyway with the same color. So, and it, again, when I was talking about, you could do this whole thing as more of a gradient, right? As you kind of see in each of these layers with mine. Um, so you can set up those gradients any way you want. Um, and again, I would suggest, right, like doing a few of these. Um, and by the way, like please get some decent masking tape. You're going to go in like, you know, leave however much you want. But after you take this paint off, it's going to leave some a clean definition along the side that's going to contrast um, the organic chaos of the watercolor paint um, very well right because you can see this paper even the paper itself is chaotic and rough right so when anytime we do some you know finer lines controlled things with the watercolor is usually better you want to really try to contrast that uh, to try to make the watercolor stick out in most watercolor and like in um, a majority of what watercolor is and the training for it it's like it's a lot of paint and a lot of detail and it's I personally think it's a horrible use of the medium and um, because I mean in go to gouache uh, or go to like an oil paint if you're gonna do detail and and you're not you know like because the variation that this makes right I mean that's what's special about it. So I say use it um, and then mix it in with, um, again, a very sharp contrast that looks like you meant to do it of clean lines on the edge. And you can see it's also happening on here, okay, on each of these levels. And, it, and it's getting more defined, right, past even what I did because that's what's just what happens because it's this small little ocean right and it's drying and it's leaving a sediment on the the high water mark right like this is something that you see in nature this is you know I love it I hope you guys enjoy it as well um, when you get the, to get these right you want to make sure that uh, those lines right there and this is another reason why I want that good brush there's enough paint and water on there to get that clean line, right? That's what you're going to be messing with. In this design, I kind of picked this also because if you mess up and it's not clean, you just go up a little higher, right? Like you can keep going all the way up if you want to. Go to your next piece, try to start it lower, try to get that clean line out of there. And none of this has to be any of these shapes, right? So what we'll move on to probably in the last one is... Um, a silhouetted image that's more detailed and I and you could do that on each of these layers this is the next variation that you can add to this uh, kind of format um, and so on e with each of these colors what you would do is you would do like a tree or a house right the the outline of one it gets a little bit difficult because this is this is only so clean because it's so basic to get in more detailed shapes take more time and the paint is going to be distributing differently because you're you're doing different stuff with the brush um, you're, you're massaging it into the paper in a different way um, it's hard to get it more consistent right but it does leave a good effect I would absolutely uh, suggest trying to do that a little bit and you can start by you know doing like more mountainy right this is more hilly you can make it more like some plateaus you know and then kind of like play with that idea all right the sun is going down outside um, and I'm still not sure what I'm gonna make this piece about uh, as I discussed before you can do on each of these shapes uh, a, you know you can do a, a figure on it as a, a silhouetted figure and it'll work very well as a design element and uh, 
what I've done on some of them is like on the last one, you could do like a person, right? Or you can do like a, I've done a howling dog, right? You need to do a moon. You can just do trees. Um, I would invite you guys to just do this, right? Just do this, just do your, your nice uh, sky. And um, and then you, I mean, this, because this is, once that color's there, you take this tape off. This is a very nice piece to have on your wall. Right, um, and you could go really far with uh, arguing its uh, its importance as any, as much as any other fine art. Um, this is not really directional art, right? There's no such thing. I didn't make up the idea of painting. Uh, the idea of having um, uh, a landscape with darker colors and a you know none of I've made up these colors that I'm picking are from a selection that I got I didn't invent brushes I didn't evolve them all of my drawing and all of my art sense has come from learning from other people and in some cases stealing right um, making it my own and what happens is you basically take other people's stuff and then you add variations right and that's what I, I've kind of brought up you start with, you know, you copy at first. There's going to be natural, uh, I guess, deviations that happen. And it's already going to be your piece, right? You don't have to show the person looking at your piece the one that you copied it off of. Um, and if you keep doing variations uh, and exploring very little ones along, on each piece and making mistakes, it's going to be very much your own very soon. This is what every single artist does. Most of them are not super creative. They mostly have what's called a body of work, which is going on a specific idea and image style and slowly doing it over and over again, changing very small things about it. Uh, and then, of course, over time, uh, becoming more familiar with what works and what doesn't and really pushing those. Okay, I'm going to not talk smack. I'm going to I'm going to do what I'm going to suggest that you guys do. And and then maybe I'll show you another one where I did some other stuff. So this one, we kind of already went to maroon over here. Um but we're basically going to use like a a thicker concentration and that's going to make our last little bit here. Now this is kind of the idea of how you do coloring for a sunset. Um, and this is a, a little twist on it that I stole. Uh, well, we could say that I was inspired by um, illustrations that came out of the digital era and perhaps the 70s when commercial illustration really started to come into effect where masking techniques and gradients were starting to be uh, pushed as you know as a, as a gimmick as opposed to a mechanic for how things were working so again at this point right here I would do my shapes I would do my tree whatever if it would overlap some of this stuff it would look fantastic you're gonna have great fun playing around with this so let's just do this for now so you guys can see what you're getting into and then you guys can explore on your own. All right, we're back for the final chapter. So I'm kind of wondering, I wish I could ask you guys, right? What would you guys like me to do for the top section? I really should just do just solid blue. Probably be the best idea. That's what I would suggest you guys start with, okay? This is a larger section, um, and it's a different color, so the pigment, it's going to react differently than what's going on here. It's going to be much dicier to have control over a, uh, a consistent look that uh, I can also have that chaos inside of, like, that I got down. It, for my money, I got it down very well down here. Um, these paints, nice paints, okay, they're, they're the actual pigments, and so they all have different, like, they all have different properties. Um, and again, this is a larger space. I'm going to put a, in the description, I'm going to put the link of all the products you guys should get, okay? And just do get exactly 
what I'm putting on there. After you get down like where you feel like a stable image, then again your your materials and the sizes are going to change, make variations as well. If you did this uh, at you know uh, four by six feet, it uh, it would be a completely different ball game. Like not even the same animal. Um, even a few inches larger, you would start to have different issues. Just like what I'm talking about with this blue up here. So. Um, It'd be nice if I did like a little moon, right? Um, oh, so one of the options is actually I can I can mask it off. And th if I mask it off with tape, that will allow me to get the speed that I need to to go over this, right? Get that water down. Because once I am uh, getting, if I'm getting a little moon shape out, right? Um, every time this brush stops, especially with this blue, it's gonna leave a little. Um, it's gonna leave a little high water mark, basically, where that sediment and those the. Uh, it's not sediment, but it is. The pigment's basically like a sediment in this scenario. Um, so that would probably be a better idea. I'm not sure if it would work with this piece. Um, I really want to do a crescent moon, and I feel like that's a really bad idea. I think that the water's gonna push everywhere. Um, this blue would maybe be more solid if I was doing it darker, but we don't want to. This is a very dark blue. Most of the blues in general in watercolor are going to be um, relatively very impactful. So what should we do? We're going to skip it because um, you know, this is how my art goes. Is that like I always want to mess with it, right? Because I'm like deeper down the road, and I probably should make, you know, I should probably practice what I preach so we're gonna do it now we're not gonna do any moon we're just gonna do some we're not gonna do clouds none of that stuff all right we're just gonna do blue so this is the what did we say it was it's like a sallow blue yeah it's sallow blue uh, which I really like uh, the blues and watercolors get very like purplish looking so it's got a nice like little <clears throat> This style of blue is like a real blue, okay? So, and the the other ones, which we are like, look more primary blue. Like, I don't I don't like those. Not a big fan of the kindergarten blues. Um, so you'll see this has a little bit of complexity to it that I really like. This one, I get, again, I can't mess with it as much. I can't just put some water down and kind of like touch it in a few. Well, we can actually if we're going all. All right, let's go. Quit talking brush to paper yeah all right we're gonna we're gonna do a ton of water and and then we're gonna get in there and so I'm not gonna let this touch by the way and that needs to look like I did it on purpose and I need to get it down before it dries right I need to just kind of be like okay I'm happy with it good enough because if I mess that up especially with this brush um, all different things are gonna happen and maybe I could also um, done another gradation Right or or, or a uh, uh, a more mechanical separated gradation like I did on the bottom. I don't think I think that'd be a completely different piece. All right, uh, you guys should try that. If it sounds like a good idea, you will see how much it changes things. That t that little like movement. Yeah, we got a lot of water down here. We're gonna try to get some complex kind of clouds. Um, this can go wrong very easily. Um, if there's not enough water, it won't want to sink out. And this is, it's going to spread out a lot more than it looks like it will. Again, with these, um, if, you, if you did this project on a different kind of watercolor paper, which is basically a cheap watercolor paper, and these are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, all of the watercolor paper is very expensive for paper. Um, I think I could have gone more blue, but you know what? We're, this is what we're doing. Um, it's it's very simple. It's a basic color scheme. Uh, nothing's really perfect on it. And and in that context, I think uh, I think we did a great job here. Um, so again, links can be in description below. Um, and I'm going to let this dry, and then I will um, I will take like some good pictures after I take the. Uh, 
Oh, you guys are going to want to see a masking tape reveal. Okay, I'll do that later. Okay, let's go ahead and do the big reveal. Um, we're going to take this tape off. This is really one of the most satisfying parts. Even if the watercolor turns out bad, uh, there's always this, right? <clears throat> Which is a little bit like the dark room exposing of the negative onto some paper. And you can see there, that is, it's addicting. You know, it keeps me coming back. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, this would need to be presented uh, in context as uh, being something that people should look at and so that it should be uh, in a, a really nice frame, right? Probably a white one that's a little bit deep. Um, <clears throat> I. I would, I guess, suggest if you want to put these on your wall and go all the way, uh, IKEA has some frames that are like eight bucks. The one issue with them is that they're a little bit small and strangely sized. This will work at a smaller size, um, not a whole lot bigger, but definitely at a, at a at a slightly smaller size, and that might even be better for like getting your, you know, uh, getting an idea for how this is like all kind of going to work. Um, so I would also suggest, while I'm here, I want to talk about, this is a block as opposed to a pad. Now a pad is just like sheets. These are all connected, right? This black stuff is a glue. This watercolor paper will, um, it'll like form weird. And these are more expensive to buy as a block because you generally get more pieces of paper. But uh, especially as uh, someone exploring this medium, please get the block okay because it keeps it flat you have to iron if you don't like you have to stretch the paper beforehand you have to iron it afterwards and it's a whole process and it doesn't work real great you just do this block thing and then uh, it's pretty much flat and how this works is that there's a little place where it's not glued that's what this white place is and you can see the papers you know just a little bit separated there from where it's uh Uh, deformed a little bit from the paint from the from the water and the paint um, it's gonna happen a little bit but no big deal framing is just so much easier if these are already flat um, so I'll do a little bit of a signature right down here I do mine up and down um, I guess we can just do that now and what else was I gonna say so in the paper again the type of paper um, you could do rough, I guess. I would suggest just doing this kind of standard uh, grain, and do, and it's called cold press. I did the hot press, and it's uh, it's terrible. It's a waste of your money. Um, yeah, I love these guys that make paper here. The thing is, handmade paper is going to be the best watercolor paper, but it's just um, it's very hard to get it uh, consistent. Uh, and like at a decent price. You're always gonna have a different product. So these guys do an amazing job. Archie's at making really good paper and that's consistent and you know what you're getting when you buy it. So that's it there. Again, I'll take some better a better picture in uh, the, in the daylight. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'd love to see pictures. Guys, it, when you get into this, you know, uh, if you have the mind to, like you can, you can have a body of work in no time, right? Again, keep making those variations. Start, you know, uh, trying different colors, different uh, topics, and you can go into different, you know, whatever your little mind can think of. I mean, your large mind, excuse me. All right, guys, hope you had fun. See you soon. All right, so here we have some fast forward. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, footage and this is here I'm gonna go through another variation um, I did start using a purple I'm ashamed of myself I'm sorry I'll just I'll put the color in the link okay you can grab that uh, you basically go from uh, this this style it really helps you understand like uh, the color mixing right because you have like very clear uh, goals uh, that will help your mind like kind of actually calibrate what's going on when those colors mix and how much there is in there um, and so the red is a little bit purplish already and that purple it's a quindocrine purple um, it's just kind of on that next layer it brings you that that darker uh, mode and in this kind of um, gradation like you don't have to worry about like any other it's, it's you're basically doing like a black and white it's just yellow and red slash purple yellow and maroon and it's really a light orange right it's not very yellow um so this one here i'm doing because what they reminded me of some of these is besides being in this from the 70s they reminded me of old like you know uh, illustrations of the grand canyon or something i don't know um so here I'm doing like I did some like plateaus like I was talking about I think in the other one and some cactuses now you'll see here what happens when I start adding things okay um, and in this one I think it works out great I love it when this stuff happens right when there's these crazy little interactions between the two bodies of uh, paint and water um, I think you just go with it, right? Um, it's hard to explain exactly why it works so well, um, but in digital design, this is something that is uh, highly sought after. And here we get it uh, for free without any intelligence, and it looks fantastic. Uh, so you see again, like where those those cactuses went down, right? Um, the forcing pushing the wall i wasn't joking about my breath affecting the way that the paint and the pigment were setting so when that brush comes down right it makes this flow of the water and pigment that crashes down into that kind of orange reddish area um and sometimes there's too much of this chaos right but you most of the time there's not the the main trick when you're dealing with all this is just to not mess with things too much right um, the idea is to keep things simple so that um, you know you kind of get it in one go and don't mess up I'll, I think yeah you'll see some work later where that kind of happened and it almost happens to this guy here um, you'll see kind of what I do so in on this one this blue just like when it's on a large area like that it just it goes all over the place and makes all kinds of funky stuff going on but see I mean I it, I think it works I think it looks great I mean normally making a sky with one color it looks like it's gonna look like trash in watercolor I mean you're set it's absolutely made for it so yeah and you know you want to do and let's do our big reveal oh I just love it it's so satisfying especially when there's multiple colors <clears throat> I just love it and there's like even like little mistakes where it comes out and it looks like it's like been printed I really like that okay um, so let's look at a few other iterations okay um, and you get you know this one right like I faded it down I didn't quite want the because uh, you'll see here look this is so this is the one we did right and now I want to be clear that you guys are gonna do better at this okay especially if you do a few of them um, this was like very yellow the, everything about the way this looks will change from very subtle differences okay um, by this being moved up by these being slightly darker by I mean 
what happens is that when colors are next to each other and they're close to each other in a, in a something we're looking at, they have a relationship with each other and, uh, and it changes how our brain processes. Basically, like if we looked at you know this from really far away, it would look like one color, right? It'd be mixed together. So when you're looking at like pieces of art specifically, uh, your brain is halfway mel melting everything together, right? Um, and it's one of the things that gets our imaginations going when we're looking at art, especially if we look at the same art. People forget this, but if you have a piece of art in your house that you look at, even if you created it yourself, your brain's going to see it differently all the time when you're staring over at it on the wall. Uh, you're going to, you know, your, your mind's going to see different things about it. And that gets into all kinds of other parts of thinking, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. So again, I'm going to show you a few other ones that I did. So when you're adding, right, like the elements I was talking about, because that's what I'm going to show you on these. This one I really screwed up, especially on the, uh, the sky. Uh, but this part, you know, kind of turned out. You can see it's pretty much the same idea. I believe I used an actual yellow on this one. Um, but yeah, I got the, you know, the little dog and then the, the cactus. So uh, I'll talk about the skies a little more in a little bit. This one I feel like was much more successful but at the same time it has a very 70s vibe and um, you know why that happened as opposed to this one again because like the gradation from the darks happened faster and also like this is the same color it looks very yellow on this one um, so how much again with watercolor like how much of the color is on there like it'll be more red or more purple or um, it really changes and again when them being around each other um, but these are you know it's pretty much just two colors and then a sky so again the sky was kind of a uh, an issue you can see here it just kind of um, it just does weird things right because it's these bodies of water that are going around and the pigments and whatever uh, medium they're in they all flow differently all right and then these bodies of particles kind of like you know, collide with each other and then do these weird things as they're drawing. Um, really fantastic. So, you know, that usually works well for you, right? And, you know, like here it's made this really complex sky uh, that looks pretty good. Um, so, again, like I knew something was going wrong with the, with the skies, specifically on this one. Although on this one I, I used like a teal, I think. Um, so if you you know you do a bunch of these, you're gonna get all kinds of different. Um, the way that I'm mixing, specifically if a different person does this, right? The general idea, your colors and every, the whole feel is gonna be way different. Um, <clears throat> so again, guys, please do this. You know, have some faith, jump into it. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, I promise it's gonna be rewarding. When you get into it and you're making that second and third after the first one's not as good as you thought it should have been, you know, you're going to do that second and third one and magic start is going to start to happen. I hope you guys had fun.